I'm hitting the button like that fucking cargo ship did in Fall <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we gotta go on that. Oh my god. I can't fucking do that, bro. He waited till the moment we hit the button. <laughs> we vote on whether we continue or, or go back. We gotta go back, go back, go no, back. Keep no, your vote no, like back. Yeah, Baltimore. please keep Cody, it on. Cody, what's your vote? <laughs> Say in my show, whatever. <laughs> yeah, keep it going like the shit. I mean, what's the worst street? that can happen? Can Someone on Twitter is like, in "Slap your canceled for saying a boat and hit a bridge." Yeah, we'll say keep... worse than that, pussy. I mean, I did make a video where several people like died in Group B, so I mean, I profited yeah. off of that. Hello, welcome to Shrimp <laughs> Hours number eighty-nine. Yeah, if this is your first time to shrimp hours uh welcome aboard i just uh, like <laughs> it's all downhill from here it only gets welcome worse aboard, uh, i do want to say of all the reactions to that that is one of the more level-headed things i've seen on the internet uh hi i'm drive through i'm here uh oh it says caleb twice and one of them says clalab <laughs> <laughs> who did this <laughs> Are you who, okay? who made this show? Yeah, thanks for not having my name up while slept. It's it's because I had to change it last <laughs> second because Rusty suddenly showed up and it it, it throws yeah, everything off. Yeah, go home, Rusty. We don't want you. No, that's no. No, oh I want him. Yeah, stop bullying Rusty. Hi, I'm Drafter. I'm Caleb's. here for you, Rusty. Uh, I'm here. Cody's here. Caleb's here. Slap's here. Rusty's here. Yeah, we're cheering. Yeah. yeah um, cheering. I do want to open it up <laughs> and just get this out of the way. Just get the NASCAR segment out of the way because uh, it sucked this week. Are we not talking about it? Well, I just want to say your theory of like great race, bad race, great race, bad race has remained true, which means somehow we're going to get a banger at Richmond next week. So look out for it. Maybe the tires won't work again. It'll end up being a good race. Um, I want yeah, four cars on the lead lap. NASCAR at Richmond last season was like, hey, we're going to stop putting out stage cautions for road course races. And everyone was like, Hell yeah, that's great. All the drivers were like, this is awesome. And then uh, they made it they about immediately reversed it. six months before being like, actually, fuck you. Uh, I know you guys, everyone unanimously liked this rule, but now we are getting rid of it because an indie race went by. With we had cautions. literally the fastest race in NASCAR history at Watkins Glen, and we're like, all right. Oh, it was the Glen. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to say it, but... It was there. There was a lot of negative reaction to the stages being there. like all the kids were like, "Wow, this race fucking sucked." I mean, it, it was because it's a next gen race, but the one Dakota had stage crazy. break cautions and it was even worse. So, True. who cares? I, I did see a lot of people like trying to defend it on Twitter and failing, which is just unfortunate. Um. Oh, also, uh, IndyCar raced in the middle of the desert for the Million Dollar Challenge. Uh, I didn't watch any of it, but apparently it sucked. Uh, there was no one there because it was at that exclusive club in the middle of the desert, yeah. and the winner only got half a million dollars. Um, and just overall, everyone was pretty embarrassed about it, it seems like. So, uh, shout out to IndyCar. Um, I also I realized... A, a really good article on that where it was just like, you know, IndyCar wanted to emulate Formula One, but they ended up accidentally, like getting like all the worst parts of f1 where yeah. nobody's allowed into the track it's like super exclusive or whatever and it's just mid racing i heard there's some team owner that like got into it with the tracks like private armed security that they apparently have out there in the desert uh because they weren't allowed to like bring their golf cart somewhere or something and the, the security guard had like a power trip Anyway, good to see everything's going great. I saw for that, uh, private mercenary series. army of the thermal club. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw a really good quote. I forget where it was, but there was they like interviewed some. Uh, I, I forget who it was, but it was somebody like in the indie car industry, and it was like if they didn't make a show up, like I like next year we're not fucking showing up to this shit. Based. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, so I I know it was like the million dollar challenge or whatever because we talked about this last week. How it was originally supposed to be a lot more money than it ended up being. Bob tweets out the like NASCAR purses every week, and literally the Xfinity race at Coda was the same purse, if not more, than the IndyCar race. Like just a bog standard Xfinity road course snoozer is as much money as IndyCar's big desert, like whatever the hell. Orc. I didn't actually watch Put the Xfinity race. Up. 
because they wouldn't put it on TV in Canada because TSN's glove. Anyway, um, let's go to what's Twitter doing this week. Uh, in the headlines, uh, there's apparently been some drama on on the NASCAR front. So uh, on the one hand, they they got a bunch of money to convert uh, Auto Club into a short track, which apparently some people doubted for some reason was going to happen, but it turns out it is going to happen. Mm. And there's been rumblings that NASCAR wants to go to Long Beach and race on those that like awesome street circuit where they run IMSA and IndyCar, which I think would be awesome. Um, I think it's too tight, man. I don't think those cars could even work there. It's too we did big. a core race there, and it was actually boys. kind of a banger. As, as long as you like, oh, we're we talking about Long Beach. Yeah, as long as you don't go insane on the restarts, it was it was like genuinely it's NASCAR, a lot of fun. Dude. They're gonna go yeah, insane. They on also the tested New Atlanta with uh, on uh, i racing, and they said that was fine too. New Atlanta's a banger. Hold on, what what are you trying to You're say? Biased. It's too narrow. Who gives a fuck? You're oh my stupid. God. <laughs> That's a play race where you can only run too wide the whole way around. Bitch, yeah, just wait till it wears it, out in a couple years too, when it'll only it, be able to be single four file. Or five years, dude. I don't care. Dale Jr. is on his knees for Atlanta, and I'm on my knees for Dale Jr. So whatever <laughs> he says goes. Well, uh, apparently Roger Penske does not want NASCAR to race at Long Beach, uh, and that's going to be a whole like feud, I guess. Keeping things that would help them. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how deep that story's going to go, but we'll see. I mean, how um, are they going to do a triple header there with, like, IMSA, IndyCar, and NASCAR? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like... Because there's no way Long Beach greenlights two different weekends. There's absolutely yeah, no way. Not on, not on the streets. Um, I mean, well, IndyCar is not going to play second fiddle to NASCAR, so... Or NASCAR's not going to yeah. play second fiddle to IndyCar is what I meant. So, I mean, I, I assume Saturday you can do IMSA, Goo. Uh, IndyCar, and then Sunday you can do Cup. Fuck Aren't there also, IndyCar would isn't hate there that, like the Mazda uh, MX-5s race there? Or like, isn't there like some other bullshit happening? Yeah, it's like an IMSA, IMSA feeder thing. We'll see. I, it's still so early that I don't... I don't is that when the dentists race and they're like prototypes? LMP3s, about? yeah. I don't know if they go there, though. Like well, that would be too dangerous. Also, keep in mind too, Long Beach. I mean, it's going to be on Pacific time. You're going to have all that. You could start that fucking cup race at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and it'd be fine. Hmm. I mean, you, you do whatever you got to do. That's true. Uh, the other thing I've seen on Twitter today, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently they've okay. So there's there were rumors in North Wilkesboro that someone at some point was running like a moonshine mill and was storing it under the grandstands and apparently today some of the grandstands collapsed and lo and behold there's a bunch of empty space under the grandstand <laughs> and uh they 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 just they they keep calling it a possible moonshine mill cuz all all it is so far is just a bench has fallen into the ground and they're like oh there's space under here under the grandstand so it might just be like that's the way they were built um I'm sure but it's not who like knows? storage or anything under there with like a door like accessible from underneath well yeah they would know if there was a a door um well what's crazy is like those stands are like it, it like built into the ground so yeah like naturally oh, really? you wouldn't th yeah, you wouldn't think that there's space underneath it. So, like, it, it would have had to have been dug out. Because the way Wilkesboro is, it's like turn four is, like, up here, and turn one is down here. So, I don't know. There's there's definitely some room for Dude, operation. Caleb, imagine we're, like, taking our mid-cup race nap at Wilkesboro. And, and just, just fucking stands. <laughs> collapse. <laughs> Dude, yeah, so I'm just imagine it, uh, that video that Ben took of me sleeping during the truck race and just, like, <laughs> like the entire thing just falls to me like as soon as they pan to me. Well, at least you'll have some of Junior Johnson's old homebrew underneath there to drink some of the pain away from the <laughs> stadium collapse. Yeah, but I thought it was built the same way Greenville Pickens was, where they made a mound of dirt and then they just put like some concrete grandstands on top of it. Well, someone put a hole in either the concrete or the mound of dirt. It's, it's like the uh, the rat tunnels in <laughs> New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they come just scuttling out of there. <laughs> yeah, these dudes who haven't seen sunlight in like 20 years come come out of there. I was about to say the fucking, uh, 
Yeah, they're gonna pull a mattress out of there. The, 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 the real troglodytes come out. <laughs> the stained mattress comes out. We just bust the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just a squatter just <laughs> camping out at North Wilkesboro, just hanging out under the dude. Yeah, the what if it was like, yeah, dude, it's just like a homeless dude that's been like down there for fucking ever, and then last year heard like race cars there for the first time in like thirty years. It was like, what the yeah, fuck is like happening? Out of <laughs> subsisting, getting all of his nutrients from fucking moonshine, <laughs> and and just the scraps of race concessions that fall down. What? Yeah. What if that's not even like a homeless dude? There's just an entire just homeless camp just hidden under North. This is like a Road. civilization. It's like <laughs> it's like Atlantis, been... North Wilkes or uh, Atlantis, North Wilkesboro. Like their bloodline is adapted to live only off of fucking old moonshine, and they're just like <laughs> like whatever cigarettes fall down there. Pop cigarette and bloods and moonshine <laughs> chewed up sunflower seeds. Let's see, slaps pistachio shells. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're uh, eating hella pistachios at the 600. It's going to happen. Oh, Dude. God. I'm just hell imagining yeah. the, the shell puddle that you'll leave behind. You should be able to see it on the broadcast. There's just going to be like a pile of just shells God. just sitting there. Mm. My favorite part was uh, at the Indy 500 last year when we started putting shells on Cody and he didn't notice it. And he like shook them all off and there were just like 30 fucking <laughs> shells that fell off. <laughs> God, you animals. Yeah, we got more on Rusty, though. We put at least 40 on him before he realized what was going on. <laughs> Rusty, Rusty, how have you been? You, did you empty the uh, shelf? Well, and the you pulled all the stickers off. I oh, I kind of cleaned my whole room, but um, huh. just to let you know the state of things, uh, at 9.15, so 15 minutes ago, my buddy texted me, quote, did you kill yourself yet? <laughs> Can we get that guy on the podcast? <laughs> this is the guy you heard uh, talk to yeah, me on I speakerphone. Know, I know exactly yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, uh, I, I've been in training all over the, the Twin Cities area, and I... You know, you think like the older you get, you'd like mature in some ways, but I'm still that guy in the middle of the classroom that just starts like hysterically laughing out of nowhere and cannot <laughs> stop. Like, <laughs> I can tell you that. This is a molasses mud flood event. <laughs> on, on, on day one of uh, one of my training, uh, I, I, this was probably two weeks ago. We had to like stand up and like raise our right hand and take an oath, and I started cracking up mid oath. <laughs> <laughs> Based. I just I don't know, man. What I, you have I've to make seen an oath things. too. What, like what? I, I hey, can't what talk about it. That? I took I took the oath. <laughs> okay. Made... Ru Rusty, are you working for the United States government? Are you a Fed now? <laughs> I, I... <laughs> I can tell Slap, he's been undercover for years. What job makes you take an oath? It says federal employees, representatives, senators, judges, political appointees. Dude, it's not Rusty's on the city council. Yeah, Rusty, you might, you, you might be. Rusty's a fed. The thing that made me laugh, he didn't deny it. You know, I should actually look for clarification on that because if I'm a fed, I gotta, I, I gotta get out of there. <laughs> Behind enemy lines, <laughs> he's a double agent. They look up his his internet history, and it's like, oh no, we cannot let this guy in the, the yeah. company. They, they do a they do a background much. track and just see shrimpage, and they're like, just like automatic, just flight ban. Like, get this guy the fuck out of here. I gotta say, going to the re like back into the real world after like five years of this degeneracy is hilarious because <laughs> some, it's just I don't know. Some people are stuck in like the I don't I don't even know what decades eighties nineties they have uh, they I don't know man they just haven't evolved at all. Their sense of humor is trapped in time. Like I like you guys call me a boomer all the time, which I which I accept and get. But if you walked into some of these rooms and you hear these hear these people talking, you just want you just want to kill yourself like actually <laughs> damn so things are going well i i've influenced the uh 
the uh, the rhetoric over where I work because oh, I can I had imagine. My, I had my supervisor threaten to put a car bomb on me. <laughs> Did you deserve it? I definitely deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I fucking went to one supervisor. I was like, hey, can I leave this stop off? It's like 50 packages. Can you have like the guy who's just doing cleanup duty around the building have him do it? He said no. So I went up to a different supervisor and asked him. He's like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's like going to your other parent and asking the same question to get a yes. <laughs> and uh, the one guy's like, man, I ought to put a fucking pipe bomb in your car. <laughs> God. But the, the, the supervisor, the supervisor who told me to like leave it off, he like came out to me like later that day. He's like, "Dude, that was hilarious as fuck." <laughs> Based, yeah, you're going to that supervisor first from now on. Yeah, <laughs> I was like feeling them out, see if you're like, hey, what, "What guy can I talk to to just like leave a bunch of shit off the truck?" God, you are an animal. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I guess we might as well play the theme song, even though we're kind of already here. Animal Planet, woo. My little pony, my little pony. <laughs> I forgot that's where that meta came from. My little pony, it's my little pony. I don't actually have any Animal Planet, I just wanted to play the song, because we were already kind of there. Yeah. <clears throat> Shit, I don't have any either. Yeah, it's... it's I don't know. Got any animals, animals this weekend? Hold on. Anybody got any animals from work? Work? I I, I can I tell work. one. Um. Uh, let's hear from the uh, Target Gestapo himself. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. It was literally earlier today. Um. Fresh animals. I guess somebody. Yeah, somebody called the the store. Uh, claiming that they got sprayed in the face. And wanted to like, I don't know, like investigate it. So they they like flagged me down about it, and that was like my first reaction was like, uh, like she told me, and I was like, what the fuck? Like sprayed in the face by like what? Like what are you talking about? Did you specify with what? <laughs> no, that's the thing. Like she was like, Water, I don't know what sprayed drink. me in the face. Yeah, she was like, I don't know what sprayed me, but I have like a a sore throat and a runny nose now. And I was like, do you have like allergies? You have like, COVID. Uh, tell, like, tell her it was the water of life. She's now the uh, Lisan Al Gaib. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I went and looked, and this lady gave me, she gave me a time and a place. She said it was like twelve fifteen on Sunday. Um, in like the candy aisle of Target, and I was like, "Damn, sure, like okay." I went back. I scanned from eleven thirty to like one fifteen. I didn't see this lady in the candy aisle at all. She was not anywhere to be seen. Not in the aisle. Not like in the peripheral of the aisle. So I called her back. I was like, "Like, what are you wearing?" Like, I she gave me her receipt, and I like way. tracked her through the entire building yesterday. She never went to the candy aisle. I was like, how the fuck did you get sprayed in the face with something and you're not even in the candy? Like, you're not anywhere near... You went near through the candy. NSA database and you didn't see her. How do you come up with that story? I, like, It was a real old happen? lady. Like, I doubt she's lying to me. I think she's just stupid. <laughs> and... It has dementia. Yeah. I Something. But... Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, she, she, she sent me on a ring. I spent like an hour and a half and then eventually I was just like, fuck it. And I was like, oh yeah, it was like our cleaning team. And then I like went in the back and got like a cleaning and I was like, yep, it's like this thing. It says 24 hours. You'll feel irritation. Bye. <laughs> just send her off. Just made some shit up. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Source. I made it up. Fucking if she dies of cancer or something, not my the source. Fault. Trust me, bro. Yeah. Literally. Cody, are you still God. giggling about getting sprayed by the water of life over there? <laughs> I, I stopped Something set you off. But I, I... No, he's, he was grabbing the beard in contemplation. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of my uh, training modules, we'll call it that, uh, was on the subject of animals. And I, I thought I would be funny and just uh, try to ask a question to get a self pop uh -oh. out of myself, uh -oh. which it did. And I asked. Uh, <laughs> I asked if we were if we were allowed to use self defense on the animals. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this isn't a classroom with a bunch of people. And this instructor's <laughs> taking this shit way too serious. <laughs> like, way too serious. Didn't find any humor in. And uh, I, I couldn't stop laughing after he said this. I, I got to pull it up because I text some of my buddies. I just, I, I just can't, I can't get over it. All right, you're supposed to ask yourself, do I need to mace this dog? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that's that not what title. i had in mind i thought i thought like doing like actual like moves on the like the, the animal you know but the, i guess the first reaction from these people is pulling out a canister of mace and taking to the dog face like Sorry, i just thing in the eyes. i just yeah i couldn't stop <laughs> laughing and apparently they're like hey, whatever you do do not blow it into the wind so it comes back and like maces your own face and i just could not stop because these people just take it so serious and they were like they were getting pissed. Like you could see it in their eyes, like reliving like their 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 flashback of the mace experience. <laughs> and I'm just fucking dying, dude. Like dude, everybody's oh, yeah, dude, dude, every every oh. like oh Cody? Is that happening for you guys too? Cody yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Cody, Cody is oh, lost to him. <laughs> They're all that dead. Was, okay, they're back. I no, transferred it to Caleb. I think that's something on DT's end because I his camera was doing that for me earlier today, and then the stream did that like ten minutes ago. Oh, it's my fault, no. is it? <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, how's like, your I hard drive it. space doing? Great. Oh, I can record for another DT's thirty-five right. hours and thirty-seven minutes. We're driving God, good. Oh, I love that they're teaching Rusty the proper dog macing methods. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, well, you, like if, you've ever, if you've ever like talked to like or uh, just watched like YouTube videos of like cops reacting to other cops like body cam footage, they're like, dude, I learned like one time you never use mace because it always like flies back onto your face, <laughs> flies on your partner's face and all this shit. So they just don't do that shit anymore. Like cops do that like once they get fucked by it themselves and they never do it again. Rusty, I, are they a taser to I, well, the dog. I, yeah, I keep thinking about the videos that we watch late at night where the dog jumps through the window. And just, like, <laughs> oh yeah, Duke the Hero the Dog. Glass. Duke the Hero Dog. Well, and that one at the like pizza delivery guy when he walks up to yeah, the door like the and the dog just goes up in the dog yeah, he, he, <laughs> front glass. The picture of it and the thing just busts through the store. I'll door. never forget that night. We were discussing police dogs and the tactics they use one night uh, in... And uh, Rusty did not believe us that, like, police dogs are trained to, like, leap through windows. <laughs> and Ed, just with zero hesitation, like, Rusty, you don't believe it, huh? Like, with zero hesitation, pulls up a video in a millisecond. And yeah, it's <laughs> like the standoff. He had it in the chamber. It was ready some, to go. Some guy just in his car just kind of yelling out at the cops through the window and just... Within five seconds of the video starting, you'll see from off screen this dog just <laughs> leaping 10 feet through the air, just into this open window, and just start mauling this guy in this car. And yeah, he immediately surrenders, stand off over. Doggy gets a treat, good boy. Give him a little pat on the head. So I saw police footage like a little while ago. It was a police dog that was just apparently like really poorly trained and uh it went after like a cop <laughs> oh that's actually kind of funny yeah it was like it was like a low speed chase and the dude got out of the car and like the canine cop like releases the dog and like points the cop the dog goes the complete opposite way and like bites a fucking cop <laughs> just like on his arm and like cops like trying to get a tourniquet on while it's like as the other guys like trying to get like the police dog off i'm sorry Caleb. The Preds were down four to one after the second, and they just scored the game-winning goal in overtime against Vegas. We Let's just fucked on them. That's crazy. I, I I was hoping you had uh, kicked out the uh, the, the power uh, cord again. The power cord again, and yeah, just like frozen time. <laughs> so, uh, Rusty, are they are they expecting you to go out there armed with mace if their response to the animals is oh just mace it? Well. <laughs> The, like, are you packing? Well, th there is an official uh, policy within this uh, handbook that I received, and uh, there is an official way to handle a situation. And they will tell you you don't even have to like, you don't even have to approach the situation. But you know, like, you want to approach the situation, right? Like, it's just it's just a dog. Like, what's the dog going to do? Uh, what the so, dog do? So they. I, 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 <laughs> Without saying too much, th there's other precautions you can take. 
that aren't stopping the dog. And I, okay. it's, it, it, and, and I'm telling you, you can see it in their eyes where they've tried all of these tactics and you, yeah, the, you, you're not slowing the dog down. It's getting what it wants. <laughs> getting a piece of that ass yeah ups they tell us like roll up honk the horn you know say ups and then maybe whistle or something if there's a dog he'll respond to it <laughs> uh but uh that i had a supervisor that told me is like look if a dog's like running at you throw the freaking package at him he straight up told me this was a supervisor this was like from the from atlanta down they told us like look if the if the uh customer does not if the customer doesn't bother to train their dog Screw the package, throw it at him. You know, just <laughs> just take that smart TV and spear the thing in the fucking yeah. face as it's charging you. There was a freaking UPS guy in, uh, I think it was like North Carolina up in Shelby. He killed a chihuahua. A chihuahua <laughs> came at him and he threw the package at it. And it was a small package, but it like it caused enough hand trauma to kill the little chihuahua. And then. <laughs> I was just like, no, oh no, I don't, God. I don't want to like throw the package at him if it's like a big package or whatever. I just, if it's like a Rottweiler or a pit bull, I understand. What's a Chihuahua gonna do to you? Well, no, I, I honestly like, I respect it. Like, I'm just envisioning like a dog like coming up, like being like completely docile, just like sniffing, like being just chill, and the UPS driver just freaks the fuck out, Rah! just package in the face. God. That's like, trigger finger oh, for a oh, amazon oh, driver I, I, just dude, dude, throws I, a package from a chihuahua <laughs> i got i had an animal planet moment dude i just now remembered it fucking uh friday i'm out delivering you know i'm out in an area i'm not normally delivering at and uh this person has like this he, house is like up on a hill and he's got this big ass staircase that goes up to like the front door or i could like go up this steep ass driveway and go around the back of the house where the garage is and I'm like, yeah, I'll just go up this stairwell. Every once in a while, there'll be like, you know, they have an outdoor cat and he's waiting to be led inside and he's up by the like front door because that's where normally where they let him in at. Well, I never even saw this cat. I never heard him, never saw him and I go to place down the package like right by the front door and, you know, take a picture of it because that's what we got to do now with our little scanner board thing. And this cat, who's apparently just chilling up there, takes off. He freaks out that I made it up that far. Like if if he literally if he did not move, I would have never known there was a cat there. But he freaked out. This big, uh, fluffy, uh, like sort of blue gray cat. He freaks out and jumps off this porch, which is literally like it's twenty feet down to the ground. Oh no! I bet. And then. And there's like a, a shrub that, that somebody had like taken out with like a chainsaw or something. So it kind of had like this stump just sitting out. And the cat like landed on that, flopped down the hill and kept running. And I hope that little dude was okay. But I was just like, dude, if you had just not moved, I would have never known you were even there. Little fluffy cat just like freaked out, dude. He like swan dived off of that fucking thing, <laughs> like like back feet out, front feet out. It was just like it was like looking like he literally looked like one of those like uh, squirrel suit like divers, skydivers yeah. or whatever. And he just like spread eagle flying off that fucking thing, and that's like I'm that person had a ring doorbell too, so they saw my reaction. I don't know if they caught it or not, if they recorded it or not, but uh, th it was literally me. Like I just turned around, like oh shit, <laughs> and then, like turn around, like look, see that the cat's okay. And he's still running and everything, and there's no blood trail or anything like that. So I think he was okay. I think he just like like the fluff, the floof graze grazed the uh, stump. No, and dude, he just took off. I watched a YouTube video. I forgot who it was or, or what it was. But it was about cats and how they, like, specifically when they fly, will throw their arms and legs out to, to increase the air resistance. And they will literally fall from, like, almost any height and still be able to land and be okay because they have so much, like, floof and fat and their bones are, like, closed in so they can just, like, flying squirrel off of any height and land and just be all right. Yeah, for a lot of like younger, healthy cats, not like elderly ones, obviously. I guess. So, yeah, yeah, they're like their terminal fucking velocity like won't kill them. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking insane. The as long as they do the spread here. eagle. As long as there's a good updraft that they can just float them down to the ground unharmed.
Yeah. He just like disappeared into the bushes, and I saw him like careen out, just like go around the back of the house. Mary Poppins right. is way down to the ground. <laughs> uh, to roll into the media check in, which we still don't have a theme song for. Thanks, Ben. Uh, he doesn't show up to these anymore. It's media check in. Uh, what what games are we playing? What media are we GTA, watching? Dude, we're, we're we are we are GTA. actually cracked out on GTA again. Cody said he was gonna stop when he reached level two hundred, and he's at like two twenty now. Two fifteen, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> and climbing, because we're on like every night. We even got Ed back into it. Like genuinely, he's on like every night now. Yep. Uh, playing it's... after we're done. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're yeah, we're cracked out right now. Yeah. yeah, me and Cody were playing Fall Guys last night, and uh, we had five dubs in a row, and I absolutely no, it was on some. It some was going fruit. to be five, and then you biffed you it. Biff the yeah. fruit counting, amateur hour. Uh, all right, we have a dubs. lot of friggin' emails to get through, so I'm just gonna we're all just right. gonna go there what? immediately. Rapid fire. No drip or drown. There I, are no there's new paint no schemes. Like, what do you I want guess. me to talk about? There's the Kobayashi car. He got run over by Stenhouse again. I didn't watch Coda, so I didn't know if there were new There was, not. like, nothing else. Like, I don't know. There's nothing interesting to, to talk about in Dripper Joe this week, genuinely. Okay. Uh, wow, so. Wow. It is confirmed that the money team is dead, though. They're well, it's not Jennifer. really. Multiple teams have run the same number in the same season before, but. I don't know. I'm just saying it could happen. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised be if they came from the ashes. Anyway, let's read some yeah. emails. Send in your fucking mail. In mail. Watch, Watch your fucking, fucking hands slap. slap. Send in your fucking mail. I'm never outrunning these guys. Martin's Bill 2022 allegations. I don't give a fuck, Why man. Why would you? You better send in those emails at this point. Welcome to fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan fan mail. ATT's processor's dying. Yeah, I did that for me too. I'll skip all the rest in peace of money. Dude, it's uh, Discord is it's getting worse. I don't know why Ed and I have been talking about this. It's just it never used to skip, and now like every second it'll like click or skip. It's yeah, it's yeah, genuinely it's right getting now. worse, yeah. and I don't know why. What's like, I, Discord I don't know. backup plan? Oh, we don't have one. I can up the bit That's what I mean. See what happens. Can you do it live on YouTube and get canceled? Fuck it, we'll do it live! Alright, uh, we'll do it live! Hey, if you want to send what us What does emails, that mean to play us out? If you want to send us no questions, there. comments, Sorry. concerns, things to talk about, things that you find interesting and we might make fun of if they're not, send it to shrimphourspresents at gmail.com. Every week we'll read through some emails Imagine from you guys. Rusty's not, rusty pointing. not pointing. Yeah, what, yeah, what the fuck what is that? Rusty, what are you doing? He's You're doing not the looking. O. Yeah, he's not like he's not paying attention. He's not participating. He's here, he's a fed. I am thankful that he's here, and I love him. This, this is the he, second time my computer's been on in like a month, and it's acting up. So crazy. it's crazy. I'm are you stroking too busy out. Killing neighborhood dogs to fucking <laughs> associate with us anymore, dude. A local dog. Dog. With the ATF. Amazing. God damn it, Rusty. I dude, <laughs> Rusty is with the ATF. Hold on. Hold on, Rusty. Right. You said you said you would destroy the ATF. Now join them. <laughs> destroy him. From that the is. I, I I didn't say it at the time, but I do heavily relate with. Uh, what the fuck is my my dog's just licking the curtain? What the fuck? Sprayed <laughs> some uh, ranch dressing on there. Anyways, but like, I, I, I do really resonate with the thought of like, <laughs> I like I don't realize how much brain rot from shrimpage I have until I go out and try to participate in real life, and yeah, it's like that. everything is like it's just it's bad. Like it is genuinely right. bad. Until you realize you're a dog mode. that licks curtains. Yeah, we definitely hit this point I, in shrimpage where it was like, this is cool. These people are great. We play video games together. We have fun. And now it's like, this is unhealthy. This is, this is yeah, bad. This is... I feel stupider. This is a waste of my time and my life. And I'm a this worse human being because of <laughs> it's just going down. Dude, when we had like peak yeah, we like, shrimp craft hours, that was like when oh. I realized I was like, this is like taking up so much of my life. <laughs> we, it, like, we genuinely, like, it used to be a joke. But I think it genuinely gets worse every night that we like connect. And it's like, like it, addictive. It's... it's like every single night there's dudes on, and it's it Dude, goes yeah. late. It's like yeah, it's like what am I supposed it's to do? Just not talk to these people, yeah. and then not stay up until three a.m. Like those it's fucking just... veins, nice and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shout out to going. like 
guys like staying up with Ed till like seven a.m. just ripping Fall Guys dubs. God. I don't think I don't think I've ever I'm doing that tonight. talked about this on this podcast, but we had a night. Uh, one night in shrimpage <laughs> where I genuinely did not leave until seven o'clock the next night. I went 19 straight hours Jesus Christ. with at least record? one person. It is, a record. it is a shrimp record, but at least one person was in there with me the whole time. It went like DT, DT crashed out, Ed went hard with me, and then midday, yeah, I literally people slept, started joining again. came back, and Caleb was still here. Like it's, Dude, it's one, one thing. One time I fucking played Fall Guys with Ed until like midnight, went to sleep, woke up at like 9 a.m. to go to work. Ed was still in shrimpage. He was still <laughs> there. And then we played Fall Guys again <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Hell it's yeah. A, it's a morning pre-work fall, guys. That's, dude, that's how you know it's a good damn scrimpage if it's 9 a.m. and you're still on. <laughs> yeah. God damn. There have been some legendary nights. It's great even just like waking up and seeing like people are posting things at like 7 a.m. Yeah, it's like you just like boot up like shrimpage just at like 8 a.m. before you have to go into work and you just like scroll through it and it just says, you know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., new post, 7 a.m., new post. And it's like, dude, these guys went ham last night. Dude, <laughs> you can't I... stop. Once you go deep and it's, you can't stop. <laughs> Hold on, I thought I was the only Endless one that did that. Endless jumbo shrimp. <laughs> like, when I wake up, that's literally, the like, one of the first things I'll do is go to Discord, see what you guys were talking about, like, the night prior in general, and just, like, see what was going on. It's, like, it's one of my, like, routines. Dude, I, I love, like, going on uh, general and just seeing something completely out of context. Like, the Iran-Iraq war from 1980. It's just, like, why the fuck are these guys talking about this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, Blake and like I were talking about global conflict. <laughs> Yeah, Big fan. Some of the most recent stuff. <laughs> I was like, "Wish I was there, bro." <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's read an email. Uh, we got uh, Jesus Christ. We got twelve emails this week. Oh my god! Oh, you're about to say twenty. I was just like, "We got to do half of them." <laughs> it's over. So we'll try and we'll try and roll through them quick. All right. The first one comes from Mr. Ass, who went to Bristol and says, "Bristol was cool." Uh, but I watched the end of Evangelion in theaters with a friend who's never seen it, and it was great, but also super uncomfortable. Uh, so that makes me wonder, what was the most uncomfortable you've been in a movie theater? Oh, oh, I got, I got one. Me and my dad were watching uh, Django Unchained, and uh, no. yeah, <laughs> it was a movie theater. Like you know, it was like half black, half white, and then. You know, there were like certain scenes where I was like, hey, "Can I laugh at this?" <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> and like, you could tell there was like one half of the theater that was laughing, and the other wasn't. And then there would be a different scene where the other half would laugh and the other half wouldn't, because it is like it, it, that. Quentin Tarantino loves to tread that fucking line. He loves to fucking do that. And so, like, when you're like watching it like in a big ass theater, it's just like. It's it's like super uncomfortable, but you watch it with like a group of, like you watch uh, the Hateful Eight with like a group of close friends in like a, a dark room, like it's such a good fucking movie, and you like you're riffing off of each other while the movie's playing and everybody's having a good time. But Quentin Tarantino movies, if you're just like in a crowded theater with like a hundred other dudes there, you're just it's just it, it's just like. Dude, is it, my, is it okay to laugh at this? Because that was fucking funny, but nobody else is laughing. <laughs> Ed's been on a massive movie binge the last, like, year or so, and he's openly taking suggestions. And I keep... I've been saying for over a year, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, One of my favorite yeah, yeah. movies of all time. Tarantino's directorial debut. And just for whatever reason, he's just like, nope, nope, no. He just makes every excuse just to not even <laughs> give it a shot. Just... It's one of those things where once he watches it, he'll love it, but he won't even try it. I don't know if this is yeah, like no this uh, where you guys are, but here, like, when you when you go to a movie, like, the show time is, like, whatever, uh, but the movie doesn't start until, like, 15, 20 minutes, minutes yeah, after, yeah, like, they show you a bunch of previews yeah. and shit. Yeah, and yeah, I'm so used like to that. Here. But IMAX movies, specifically IMAX ones, always start, like, on the dot at the time. Mm. Uh, which is great if you're there on the dot, but not so much if you forgot that that's how that works. If you dilly dally. Uh, so we 
we dilly dallied into Blade <laughs> Runner on like opening weekend, and we had seats oh, in like no. the middle. And oh, there's nothing worse than walking in with your freaking popcorn. And you open the door, and the movie's already on. You've got to like, like squeeze your way into your thing, and the people have to stand up because there's not enough space for you to just shuffle by. Oh, that's uh, that took like a month off my life just getting my seat, and then I have to be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because the thing was packed. Uh, and uh, we, we had a similar experience going to Dune, but we showed up like the minute it started, which was perfect. Like we were just like four seats away shuffling and then the lights went off and we're like, hell yeah. Can't do that shit, dude. That is way too stressful. I got to be there like 15, like 10, 15 well, minutes before the movie starts. And, like, if I'm in control, I'll yeah, be there on time. Yeah, you got to show up early but... like shit talk with your friends. Yeah, if, if, you always like laughed at the preview and call the trailers like stupid and like what the fuck is that movie? Like who the fuck would watch that? If if the family is involved, uh, who I like watching movies with, uh, they will not be there on time. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not possible. Caleb uh, time. Yeah, yeah, literally. I've I've <laughs> some friends who are even worse, but Caleb, you're uh, gonna catch some strays tonight. It's just the way it is. Uh, we do have you, a, a rusty style. A stray bill. Oh, we got two emails from uh, <laughs> Andrew R. The you first of it, which, the first of which is a drip or drown request, uh, mm. which I guess I forgot about. Then this was like a whole week ago. But uh, supercars ran at Melbourne, and they uh, they Melbourne. <laughs> the, the Pizza Hut car ran a special like SpongeBob tie-in. Oh, didn't uh, with they Macaulay do the, Jones. The, uh... Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, same dudes. Nice. And it's like another yeah. Pizza Hut tie-in, and they ran a freaking SpongeBob car, and it's awesome. Just the whole thing is wrapped like SpongeBob. It's got his old face across the hood. God it's a fan. They couldn't find a. They couldn't dunk that car in some water like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where they <laughs> yeah, set being up a, in a sewer. sewer. Uh, and I, for some reason, I think Andrew R doesn't like this, uh, but he's also a boomer, so they should put like a big pineapple behind it. That would have been sweet. Based yeah, bikini like bottom. Pineapple. Uh, Alright, the next email comes in from Jace uh, who says, Howdy Shrimps with season 2 coming to a close, I write in this week asking, what is, what? in your opinion, the best quote of season 2 so far? My personal choice uh, if I remember correctly is uh, s Slap saying, my dick has oh, taken no. me to places I wouldn't go with a gun <laughs> uh, This is my favorite quote uh, from Chase <laughs> Jay said they didn't Look. remember who it was, but I was—I know immediately that that's a slap, slap quote. <laughs> yeah, no one else would have said that except for No one else. Listen, I'm down bad for Rhea Ripley right now. God, oh you my. put that Dude, tweet your Twitter, out. Your Twitter, like, if I was Mark Martin, I'd unfollow you too. Like, it's yeah. bad. <laughs> You're getting, like, these yeah, prolific Mark people Martin unfollowing you. Jr. both unfollowed me. <laughs> it's oh, Joker. God. <laughs> I need you to control, like, you couldn't control the horny, like, to just keep Dale Jr. and Mark Martin at least around. They, like, it got so bad that they clicked on your profile and unfollowed you. God. It was one of those moments where, like, I saw the clip on Twitter and I was like, I wonder if Slap has seen this. And I go to his Twitter and he put a yes. whole essay about being down bad and all of the comments are like oh you saw the clip didn't you and he replied to every <laughs> single one god <laughs> Just like, really? I regret I to inform you that we are again down bad <laughs> on main <laughs> The worst is when I get some, like, I'll get some just, like, horny-ass tweet, and I'll be like, why is this on my profile? I'll click on it and just slap shoes like. Yeah, like, retweet yeah. it. And that's on the or, main. Yeah, like... You don't even know what happens on the other account. <laughs> Dude, uh, slaps bookmarks. We need burner. to investigate the, hey, episode 100, we go into the closet and your bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> you can have one or the other, not both. <laughs> God. There was one, there was literally, like, an anime girl. With just giant titties and a gun the other day I saw that popped up across my profile. I was like, what is That might be the like, most slap the most thing. Slap pilled thing I've ever seen. God. Listen, we're we're stu we're down we're we're lost in the sauce. It's over. Down tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, yeah, remember when you said we had a zillion bad. emails and we're like still on the first one? <laughs> the next one is incredibly questionable. Oh no. Uh, yeah. I guess this is popcorn oh, no. bucket related. 
And this comes in from the wormussy. No, this comes in from review. No, he did some math. We need to send it to that one YouTube channel that we discovered to do a review on it. Here, I'm just gonna open this up. Bill Bill writes it, and he he opens up with the average jizz is five milliliters. Uh, it says you need 200 to fill a liter and 40 to fill a pony jar. And 25,000 people to fill a trash can. Oh my god. Slaps. Can we fill this guy full of fucking lead? Get him out of here. That's <laughs> tough. <laughs> Caleb calls for us shooting our email. Yeah, no, just, yeah, just right. take him out back. Let's just... <laughs> Put him up against the wall, just you know, some easy target practice. This is why I read the bad emails. There's always a good response. Dude, I don't know a podcast that just routinely wishes death on their viewers like we do. Here. Don't send like, us like bad like emails. Week. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, we get plenty of based emails, and then we get fucking filling a trash can with jizz. Who the fuck <laughs> listens to that and is like, let me calculate how many people right? would need to come into the fucking dune bucket to fill it. Like, what is wrong with you? That is below us, which is impressive. Uh, that's, all that's right. below me, and I, like, we've just that's discussed I mean. how bad I am on Twitter. Like, that's that's questionable even by my standards, which are basically non-existent. <laughs> the The next email is actually genuinely based. This comes from this is Andrew R's real email, uh, and he's talking about how we were sort of asking what we should do with Phoenix to make it race good because it currently doesn't. Uh, and he proposed with an image turning it into a road course where they go up and down the mountain. Oh, the uh, Baja Phoenix 1000. Which that is incredibly Australian of him, but would also be incredibly based. And the last corner, which <laughs> you just come yeah. ripping down Yo. the hill. Oh, hell yes. yes. Yo. Like, just imagine, like, the, the elevation Wait, difference. We... You come out of turn two. Coming straight down fucking Rattlesnake Hill. I was about to say, are we yeah. racing on Rattlesnake Hill? That, that might be sick. Andrew R. might be based for that. <laughs> it's it's Dude, like... Dude, we... American Mount it. Panorama. But it would be kind of based because you could keep Phoenix. the oval there and then just build out this road course and then race on yeah. that and still have the grandstands and the start finish line and all that stuff down there. You might be might be cooking. All right, uh, the next email comes in from Luke. You have like Arca West just race on the oval and just have the Cup Series and Xfinity race on the fucking <laughs> rally course. We have an yeah, all time email. The oval. Uh, whoa, Luke, whoa. who says, uh, well, good news is my Verstappen jinx worked one race late, I guess. Uh, but the bad news is my grandpa died. So pretty mixed up week. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why, bro? I'm sorry, man. Why? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> but bad news, my grandpa died? What a way to break God. the news. Sorry for in, in order, In order to save F1, we had to sacrifice a life. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's was it worth it? Lost his grandpa, yeah, and just fucking. I'm but if you if you we're, write we're, in to Shrimp Hours Presents and talk about a deceased family true. member, you should know what you're gonna get. <laughs> like, bro, are you not on good terms with this man? Like, <laughs> I, I, bringing him up on this podcast, I think, does him dirty. That's that's that's. Hey, that's just I'm my saying. Opinion. Uh, that was one of the best that. bits we've ever had on the show. <laughs> Good news, Max Verstappen lost. Bad news, Grandpa dead. <laughs> Told you we had an all-time email. Where do, where do we race next time? Next F1 race? Japan in, uh, I think, a week and a half. We hey. killed Cody. Cody's dead. <laughs> They're doing Japan in the spring. Yeah, they moved it up for some reason. I don't know why. I kind of liked how it was like later in the season, but oh I man, on to that, fuck, the, dude. Fan mail carries this podcast. I don't know where we'd be without you guys. <laughs> yeah. you have questionable taste. Uh, can, can all right, the name of the podcast just "Good News Max Verstappen Lost Bad News." My grandpa's dead. <laughs> I might have to cut it a little bit, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking grandpa's dead. When just this podcast is in honor of Luke's grandpa. Just 
Right. There's no like worse honor than getting a episode of this shitty show dedicated to your life. I kill myself posthumously. Uh, <laughs> sorry for your That's physically buddy. possible. Cody tries to be the nice guy here. Uh, all right. Yeah, so, uh, the next got to play a good cop around here. Yeah, sorry for I... your loss, and everybody else is just laughing the entire time. We open up the podcast in like the worst way possible. Like you, you know what you signed up for. That is true. <laughs> All right. The next email comes in from Kyle, who says Coda is mid. I feel that it's too long, too wide to give a good racing, especially with the loose track limits. Yeah, that was. Don't talk to me about track limits. That's the greatest thing about Road America: grass. So that the next line that Kyle says, I think Road America would be much better than Coda, having more interesting racing, in my opinion. Can we uh, please? Can we do Chicago and Road America? Can we just try it like on back to back weekends so you don't have to travel both, far? Both please. very big markets. They're both raceable. You got like 120,000 people showing up to Road America. Like That's what I mean. It's like, I, I know NASCAR doesn't own Road America. They don't America, own it. That's what, yeah, they, they don't like it. They're still a cut of it. That's a, it's a fucking lot of goddamn money. And I like, know Texas is a big me. state, but we all we already got a boring ass stupid track in texas already why do we need two exactly mm. sorry uh, there, like, like uh, go ahead. Go ahead. all right uh kyle <laughs> says uh i have two thoughts this week the first is what if cup went back to a 30 race season but had more exhibitions could open up more room for tracks otherwise deemed no. too gimmicky to be on the schedule no uh we already have two exhibition races that's more yep. than enough yep nah. and this question, uh, their question for the week is, what is the best looking cup car body? None. Personally, Next. I like the Ford Fusion and the 2003 Pontiac Grand Prix. I don't know about the Fusion, but the, the 03 Grand Prix was a banger. I like the uh, 96 through 02 uh, Grand Prix, where it's a little bit more squat, looks more like a late model body. I don't know. I, I kind of like the, the like big schnoz on the 03 one. I, love I the do luminous. like that too. Yeah, the, the luminos are pretty sick. I never liked the lumina. Yeah, they weren't that Always interesting. I never liked you, you fucking bitch ass. Jesus God, Christ. okay, fuck off. Damn. Jesus. All right. Like, uh, that, it's like, oh, I disagree about the your taste in uh, car bodies, and Caleb's immediately like, kill yourself. Early two thousand. I do appreciate. Uh, Go ahead. Monte Cody. Carlos are pretty sick. I mean, just anything Gen oh, yeah. Four was sick. I don't know. I, I like the. the... Fucking... I like the SS's more than the ones with the like squiggly wing. The Thunderbirds are just the Hitler stash on the front of them. It's just like, it's, a, it's, it's the it's the D shape. It's like the fucking like little. It looks so D shape goofy. Up front. Like it looked like all even all time banger again. The Mac Tonight car mm. just fucking goofy ass grill on the front of it. Like who the if they fuck had headlights on it back in the day, it'd be cooler. Probably. I never realized how much. Hey, that, this that was like, my very first car. Was a '96 Thunderbird. Hell yeah! It kind of reminds me of like the the Xfinity Supra a little bit with like the, the headlight a little bit. Pivots. Reminds the way it's got the like nose kind of sticking out. Yeah, it's weird. Hey, that, right. that that hey the ninety six ninety seven Thunderbird was the fastest car in uh, NASCAR history. It won uh, that race in nineteen ninety seven with uh, Mark Martin. Sure, fastest race ever run. Oh, did you see? Right. Uh, uh, they arrested two of the uh. Uh, God damn it! Who are the kids of that one guy who's who's in a oh, scandal? Oh, P. Diddy. Yeah, P. Diddy. They arrested two of P. Diddy's kids, and on the helicopter camera, one of them's wearing a Mark Martin shirt. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Martin Viagra shirt. Yeah. Dude, uh, not just running the uh the sex trafficking <laughs> allegations. Yeah. Fuck. Where is it? Where'd it go? All right, you go dig for that. I'll read Hold the on. next email. Yeah. Uh, Mark writes in. He says, "I went to Coda, and it was okay." I haven't been to a race since the 2021 All-Star race, but it really felt like the cars got louder. And also the TV broadcast made them sound a lot different than they do in person. We sat in turn 15, so the seats were pretty good, and we could see a lot. Too bad nothing much even happened, and it's low-key uh, hard to track all the action at a road course from one turn. For me, the only memorable part of the race would have been the start of Stage 3, the only time someone other than Byron was leading. Uh, it was the only battle for position I could follow across the rest of the track through the TV screens, and I'm pretty sure it was the only time a battle for the lead even existed. Uh, I don't know how entertaining the TV broadcast made it. Not. Not, <laughs> not entertaining. Uh, but I really can't say this race was good. However, this was my first in-person race in a while, and the first road course race ever, so I might have just been ill-prepared. 
Damn, when the race uh, is bad for people at the track, that's, that's tough. Dude, can I can I go on a mini rant here? Like, not sure. Very mini. Very. We haven't mini. had one of these yet. I was listening to Denny Hamlin's podcast today, and you like I am like I listen to it every week, and usually I love what he has to say. Like, uh, like it's very topical. Like he has, I feel like reasonable opinions a lot of the times. But they were being absolute just fucking bitches today. Like, Denny Hamlin was like, he was on there like, oh, uh, not every NASCAR race can be in Atlanta or Bristol. It's like, if if your product literally makes me want to fucking put a bullet through my fucking skull, <laughs> then maybe reconsider what you're fucking doing every week. I mean, it's a joke. It is so bad that we are wasting cup dates doing bullshit like this like i literally i watched three laps of coda and turned it off because we have a terrible car this track is not suited for a cup car because it's just so big the cars get so spread out there's nothing happening you don't do anything you move the restart zone so you can't pass going into turn one which is the only place where you can pass denny hamlin yeah not every race needs to be an all-time banger but it, it, like they at least need to be good like do we do we not agree on that like i'm just like why does Caleb, why is like Caleb. people bitching about Caleb. no i just i just don't get it i just don't get it why don't we want nascar to be good why like why are we being why are we dick sucking 50 percent of the races this year have been bangers that's a pretty good ratio that's what i mean we should be shooting for a hundred percent why aren't we shooting for a hundred percent bangers like that's why, not why possible are... yeah not when not we go to coda attitude. yeah like you're, you're telling like we're fucking going to, like just fix the shit like why is your yeah. car bad <laughs> i'm with caleb on this one they got to really play to the strengths i do have to say i think the schedule is better than it's ever been in the history of nascar but this car is not fun to watch at the majority of the racetracks like it take it took half a second of watching xfinity for that to pass the eye test you see svg just like manhandling that thing lap one just lap one manhandling the just absolute shit out of xfinity creating tuning the cup and the thing's just planted baby mode like i don't care i'm not inspired by it that um, sounds like a fart. There were it did sound like a wet fart. <laughs> let me let me see. So just for comparison, so you said what, like fifty percent of cup races being like bangers is usually like a good rate. Um yeah, F one could never. Yeah. I'm I'm not even like I'm not talking about motorcycles. Indy car could ahead, never. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I say this supercars week. could never. Did you? We have it so fucking good. You have no idea Dude. how fucking bad it hey. could be. Dude. You have not watched <laughs> Champ Car in the 2000s. Slap. You have not watched Slap. dog shit. Think bigger. Think and we out. You're not thinking big enough. I'm not talking about just motorsports. I'm talking about sports in general. There were 256 regular season NFL games last year. 15 of them were blowouts. You think, what, what's that hit rate? I know it's not the exact same thing, but there's a reason football is so watches, big. It's because there's like 50,000 fucking baseball games, and nobody gives a shit about 99% of them. Because yeah, they I'm don't fucking about matter. Baseball. I'm talking about I'm football. I'm talking because... about football. Yes, because football is king in America. Why is football king? Because it's good. Because it's good every game. Every week, there's a good game. NASCAR is like... That's because there's a million Yeah, they have 16 to game. choose from every week. I'd hope that there's one good one to choose from. We've been watching... Yeah, that's because there's a million of them. We have one event per oh, week product. for 36 weeks. Think about the when NFL NASCAR product, was big. Man. Yeah, think about when NASCAR was big. I feel like we our hit rate... Back with in like 03, 04, 05 was a lot higher than 50% bangers. I yeah, think you watch the highlights. Go back and rewatch the full races. I watch the full races all the time. I watch the in trippage with <laughs> all of you. <laughs> Every like single one. of shooters back in 03, 04. Like at least half of them. They're more fun to watch. The races are more fun to watch. Oh, did you talk about Kansas 03? Yeah, the races are more fun to watch because they had more horsepower and they were different cars, but there were certainly snoozers back in the heyday of NASCAR. Dude, my grandparents would literally like, fall asleep during races <laughs> and just like be like nodding off like on the recliner watching a race, like at peak like you know, NASCAR 05, just like going to sleep. I'm just saying, if our standards for NASCAR are every other week making me want to kill myself is like a good spot for the sport then maybe i need to find i a think sport. you're a terminally online zoomer who is uh, the little bitch boy 
Little, little well, bitch you're a boy. fucking boomer who's used to fucking. Um, I can't continue this. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Go ahead, say a slur. Say a slur. Do no, it. I'm not gonna. No, no, I'm not slap. <laughs> well, if they're not gonna fix the car, I'm with Caleb. Play to your strengths. Ten more plate races. Oh True. my god. <laughs> Turn oh, Texas into there. a play track, two dates, fucking turn, hey, every, turn everything. Turn owns Bowman track. Gray now. We can always go back. Dude, uh, nobody wants to watch cup cars go slow. I want them going 205 no. wide all the time. Yeah, dude. I like. Oh, I'm, like. <laughs> Watching a cup car now, like, I remember the first time, like, the 550 package was used, and it was, like, the new modern era of NASCAR, and it was, like, you just literally want to die because the cars are, like, just, like, putting around at 160 miles per hour, and you're used to them ripping, going, like, 210. If I, like, if I don't, if I don't watch a qualifying lap in fear for Ryan Blaney's life, then I'm not invested in it. Like, if, if he's genuinely not, like, at the <laughs> edge of death, then I do not care. Like, Listen, I will cool. agree with you. Like, NASCAR upper management does need to be redacted. Like, the, like <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, cannot, I cannot, like, say have, what I think should happen to this. those people. But right. <laughs> well, as bad as we have it, it's not as bad as IndyCar fans. Like, ho. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> It's so bad that even like the IndyCar lifers are like on Twitter and I've seen them like, holy <laughs> shit, like it's dying before our eyes right now. That was <laughs> like, a tough week. Uh, all right. To continue Mark's email, uh, he, he bought some merch. There was an email? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing emails now? Uh, he said, I made possibly the greatest purchase of my life at the track. Uh, and this flag will definitely be replacing the three Rush Truck Centers posters I have on the wall. And he sent a hey. picture of a flag. A Ross Chastain yeah. Bush mm -hmm. car that says beer run on it, which That's is sick. sick. Mm. Uh, and also sent some pictures from uh from the racetrack. That's a cool view. Yeah, so this is uh this is that one like sort of tight bit. So you can see the end of the the hairpin, uh the end of the straight, sorry, where those other grandstands are over there, and then you get to see them go through what, like, what they call is, the stadium uh, like section. Turn 13. Yeah. yeah, so this is well fifteen, yeah. This is one of the bigger oh, sort of 15. passing areas of the track. Uh, thanks for writing in, Mark, and I apologize for all of our listeners' ears for the uh, the previous segment. Uh, oh, uh, the next one's a Harley Payne email, uh, which comes with two emails. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, oh, he did say, because uh, I, I talked, Jesus Christ, probably like eight months ago about how shitty pickup truck owners are and how those Jeep pickup trucks are like especially the worst and I've never seen one with any things in it. Um, and Harley said he put his mom on to look for Jeeps with things in them and found one. Uh, so I guess that's the level it takes to, to finally get one of these stupid Jeep trucks to actually have things in it. And it's definitely just like someone going to the airport because it's like luggage and shit. And man, those things are ugly. <laughs> Tough. Uh, and then wrote another email uh, talking about what GM could do in 2025 when the Camaro's dead. They're just um, going to make a generic car like the SS, like they did with that. Yeah, so he says maybe rebadging the Cadillac CT5 to be a like fake Chevy something. Yep. Uh, or bringing a Mexican Cavalier or a Chinese Monza. Oh, no. Kind of like what they did with the SS when that was just like an Australian car that they just Commodore. funneled in. So it could happen. I did not know they still made fucking Cavaliers. Uh, real fast. I just oh, I just want to give Harley a shout out. Oh shit! He pulled the, he put the Wikipedia article and it's like a it's like a mini Impala no, but not no, quite no. a cruise. That's not a performance. Look at that wide Hell, mouth man. bass fucking grill. I feel like that's tough. Like, Cup Car's philosophies have shifted a lot. Like, I remember it, like, it used to be, like, Fusions it had to be, like, a sedan yeah. of some sort, yeah. And now they're just, like, Mustangs and Camaros and then Supras eventually, probably. Well, like, American automakers maker, are just not making cars anymore. Yeah, no one's buying yeah, sedans because everyone wants to buy stupid little dumb little SUVs. 
Well, it's not. It's not that people want to buy that. It's like literally, no, like do. it's legis it's legislated into like American law. That too. That like big, it's it's cheaper. The bigger for them your to... car is, the worse gas mileage it's allowed to have. So American automakers have realized, hey, like we can just like make these big piece of shit SUVs and uh, uh, pickup trucks, and uh, they cost so much to build that we make you know more profit per unit and we'll just like shill these out to people and then and like of course the and of course the the foreign manufacturers where they have uh stricter regulations for uh mileage and emissions in japan and in europe they can just flood the u.s market with uh sedans and hatchbacks and coupes and all that type of stuff and the american manufacturers have just completely abandoned the car they're just making like big ass piece of shit fucking four door trucks with the beds that are this fucking long and just so they can be family paddy wagons and you know what we're all gonna live in the pod we're all gonna eat the bugs and all the everybody's gonna be driving these piece of shit pickup trucks because we all know the fucking automakers gotta make a gajillion dollars and the oil companies gotta make a gajillion dollars and fuck you if you want a decent like <laughs> mid size car laser that comes through slaps window right now and just <laughs> takes yeah. them out I, it's it's insane. It's insane how well Boeing. the marketing works. Boeing. Where these people are always like, "Well, I need to be safe on the road, so I need a bigger car." So I literally saw a fucking Jeep, like a uh, magazine ad that has like a Jeep SUV, like going through uh, like Those a swamp. Some of the worst and it, cars, and, it's, and it says like, "Let Mother Nature be afraid of you for once." And there's like alligators descending on it from the, the Americans fucking trees. Love that shit, they love it. Well, yeah, I was like, fucking... nobody outside of the state of Florida has to worry about that. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're just it... driving to work. They're lining We've up in been... six a.m. interstate traffic to drive forty-five minutes to their workplace in a big freaking SUV to do what? To kill more kids and pedestrians, Literally, statistically. Yes. <laughs> like, that's that's it. Work. That's what we've achieved. It, it, it blows my mind, because it's all, like, it all just is predatory on this, like, all Americans have been conditioned to just want to feel powerful. Like, it's all, like, they tell you, like, yeah. American might, American strength, like, we're just fucking better than all you, and then they just... They, they, but also they be afraid. Be afraid all the time. Oh, be afraid of your fellow American. Hate your fellow American. Hey, buy a big fucking tank so you can drive it on the fucking road so that you can like overpower everybody around you. Yeah, you know, just fucking Alex Jones brained fucking Americans and everywhere. Then, just fucking. I, 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 I want to say a word I can't say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I said this the other day, but I genuinely feel like like in the matrix where i've been presented with the red pill and the blue pill and i've taken the pill where i just know everything and have returned to the simulation and i just Taking like the water I, of life you I are can't. the son al gaib <laughs> dude it's so bad like it is just, it's so bad i need to escape i need to get out of here please i'm being consumed by suburbia car hell where there's just GMCs and Dodge Rams and Chevy Silverados and Ford F-150s and SUVs and Ford Explorers and it's just all it's fucking caving in and I might it, it might send me over the breaking point I might not be here next week and if I'm not here next week I'm dead and you know what happened to me they fucking I saw big oil got to me the boy the Boeing guy got to <laughs> I saw a good Fortnite uh, YouTube video about how like literally if they're like uh, if they just set a maximum front height for pickup trucks that's like six inches below what like a lot of trucks are now like literally just lower the nose a little bit it'll save like 500 people a year like guaranteed immediately just by yep. saying like don't make the nose higher than this you can still have your big truck whatever the hell like the the vehicle can still be massive just make the nose lower it will save 500 literally americans every year because they're getting flattened by these big ass trucks with these huge ass grills yeah, Literally. pedestrian deaths by vehicles are as high as they've been since like the 1990s. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's and all in time. The car, in people are also driving like fucking maniacs ever since That's COVID. True. Post was a COVID, thing. yeah, post COVID, it's been like bad. especially on the interstates. Like you'll be the going phones. 25, you'll be going 25 miles an hour over the speed limit in the right lane, and you're the slowest car on the road. Like every single car will just be blowing by you if you're not going like 40 people miles are an hour over the speed limit. They're it's, animals. It's, they're maniacs. They're maniacs. You save like Literally. almost no time. It's uh, it was two days ago. 
I was in shrimp beach in my car and there was a truck behind me whose headlights were like above my rear window. Like I could not see their headlights because it was so high because they're just in a giant fucking lifted truck that someone in their fucking 11th grade high school class told them look cool. And they're just fucking pea brained and they're like, yeah, that looks good. And fucking God, I, I want, <laughs> we need to, ra- we need to start rounding them up and just fucking <laughs> send them on a cruise. Dude, the, the, and the dudes who own, like, lifted trucks come in, like, one of two varieties. It's either a fat-ass redneck piece of shit or some, like, buck tooth like, twink fucking meth head fucking guy who's, like, <laughs> missing half his teeth. It's And they always have the fucking Instagram handle, like, on the back glass of the... Yes! Uh, yeah, always. like, dude, nobody wants to see you and on Instagram fucking, for your piece of shit RGB truck. RGB underglow on their fucking lifted truck that blinds everybody on the fucking street. It's so you bad. Lives it's down everyone. the street from me that has that and he has a fucking turbo, like, diesel piece of shit. I hear that thing whirring hey, up from the other hey, side of take, the fucking neighborhood. Take the UPS truck, park it in front of his fucking house, <laughs> take them all out. Take them all out. <laughs> all right. Um, I know, I know where, where he lives. He's got to go. He's <laughs> got to go. I completely home. forgot. It's been sitting in my lap for the past 10 minutes, but I found the shirt. Oh, cool. Damn. The Viagra car. It that was 40 sick. bucks. That, mm. that sure makes me hard. <laughs> all right. Uh, Who needs Viagra? Hard? The next email comes in from <laughs> uh, Rusty Broussard. He says, hello, shrimps. It's Rusty again. And boy, do I have quite the animal planner report. Uh, there's been a few animals at my workplace, uh, and he says he pushes carts at the local big blue Walmart. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, about a week or two ago, it was windy as hell, and this past Saturday, the rat bastard, that's the damn groundhog we rely on, uh, did the thing and lied, so I got clobbered by rain, ice, and snow. It's, oh, it's, no. yeah, it's been fucking snowy. Uh, the people are animals. Um... One dude nearly got stopped by asset protection before he went into the wooded area next to the store, which turns into a swamp. Uh, so he probably learned a new meaning to swamp ass. And just oh, earlier no. today, uh, the there woods. were people fighting in the parking lot. Uh, P.S. I mean, slap, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to you talking about the construction of the Hoosack Tunnel because it was a crazy-ass moment in history because it was the first time nitroglycerin was used in construction. And there's also multiple lives lost during the construction, uh, but also wash your fucking hands. All right, I'm not doing it just because of that. <laughs> I'll put that on the uh, the the list. No, don't, don't, don't. I'm not doing it because he 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 talked shit about washing my hands. <laughs> your fault for not washing your hands. All right, the final it was email. Thirty degrees out. God damn it. You'll like this one. This one comes in from Nick Man, uh, who says he doesn't have much to say, but specifically has an image for Slap. And it's, <laughs> no! It's yo. just Ray Ripley pointing a gun at the camera. Yeah, Slap's uh, camera just became clouded. And- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Listen, there might have been uh, mistakes made. Dude, starting this podcast was I don't think you're... Like- we we have been cracked out beyond belief tonight. This might be all time. Yeah, we, we have been in rare behavior. It's, it's been. There's been there's a lot no, of there's no game. way this gets monetized. No. <laughs> Are any of them monetized? This is this is the one that'll cancel us if nothing else already has. <laughs> I, I'm uh, sorry. I, if wishing death on people that drive lifted trucks is a bad thing, then I'm going like straight to fucking you, hell. I would love to see someone come up with a list of people that Caleb has wished death upon on the podcast because the list keeps getting longer. It's yeah, people that people steal and from Target, dogs. the truck owners, the management people that steal of NASCAR. Target are based, dude. They keep me employed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is uh, fair. What what the hell are we call in this show? Dead grandpa. Yeah, I've got either bad news: my grandpa is dead, or Rusty joins the ATF. Bad news, my grandpa is dead. You like cannot got... put the ATF in the no, podcast title. They true. come they, after they, you. Yeah, they will come for us. We'll be Ruby Ridge. And yeah, the yeah, I will be. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll come to your house and shoot your dog. <laughs> you can't do that. Dude, All right. imagine yeah, the come campsite at is just ATF just dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If I see an ATF chopper, I'm leaving. I'm going back home. 
in the show. I, uh, yeah, on the topic of the most uncomfortable we've been in theaters, I think this is the most uncomfortable Cody's been in a podcast all night. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so this will be the last one we're making ever. Bye, everyone. <laughs> if we even decide upon a title. We, we literally just did. Oh, that's one.